point is, is like, do you want your data encrypted? Do you want your data secured? You know, do you want to have good organization, uh, you know, for, uh, with regards to who works here, and who's supposed to be allowed to access what files? Everybody needs those things. So today we uh, we have a treat for business owners, maybe those uh, or, or business professionals, CEOs, CTOs, those who are using uh, the Microsoft 365 Business Suite. Maybe you're using the standard version. The question that you may have had, or maybe you haven't had the question yet, but you should. Why upgrade to MS365 Business Premium? So this is a topic that uh, Travis. Travis has all the, no, the the inside on. I'm I'm as ignorant as you could be on it, so I'm just gonna ask questions uh, <laughs> coming from coming from the seat of ignorance. So apologies, Travis, if this is something obvious, but we'll we'll just get started by uh by opening up a little bit of discussion about uh, the the business suite and and maybe what some what you've seen that some business owners are using already. Absolutely. So a lot of people these days talk about going serverless. We probably all heard that. I think we did a video before on this, right? The idea of, can I get rid of my server? And if that really is something you're interested in doing, this is the first step uh, towards being able to accomplish that is you need at least the uh, Microsoft 365 business premium level of licensing or greater, right? So greater would be like the E5 licensing. Um, and a lot of people think, well, maybe would the E3 be uh uh, greater as well. Not really. You really, I would say the business premium is really where you want to be or the E5 licensing. And the, the reason for that is a couple of key elements or key tools. Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 1. So what is that? This is your identity management platform. This is how you, um, you know, this is like your Active Directory replacement, right? So it's, it is Azure Active Directory that replaces on-prem Active Directory. So for those of you who don't know what that is, this is where you list out the people in your organization who work there. Who are they? What devices belong to your organization? Again, identity management. Like this is sort of at the core of like any business. Who Who's here? Who's supposed to be part of our company? This is where you record that information and begin to be able to push out things like policies, right? To apply inside your company. So that's number one. If you want to go serverless, you have to start thinking about going into this level of licensing. What I want to say early in this conversation is it's a huge value. You get a ton of value for a small amount of money. It's only $9.50 more over the standard licensing. Standard licensing at the time of this video, because it changes, right? It's $12.50. Premium licensing is $22. But you will get a tremendous amount of value from doing that upgrade. And again, it's the first step on your path to going serverless. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you for breaking that down, making, making it simple. Um, some of those, those terms, even though that that's, uh, they're commonly used around the office, uh, <laughs> a little, it merits a little explanation, um, especially for, for business owners, you might be using these tools, but might not, uh, necessarily know all the terminology. So, so we have that we have, uh, you know, your active directory, what are some other things that um, the business premium has, as opposed to or over the, the business standard? And I also like, I, I'm going to point this out, I like the fact that you're throwing prices out there, because that would be one of the first questions I would ask is like, how much more does this cost? So, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, sure. So, okay. Along those lines, active, uh, Azure active directory premium P one, right. By itself is $6. So if you had like standard licensing for 1250 and you wanted to add just that one feature, that's $6. So you're almost all the way to premium just by adding that one feature. Then you've got Microsoft Intune. This is the mobile device management component of Microsoft's 365 suite. This is what allows you to manage tablets phones, but also laptops and desktops. This is, this is Microsoft's uh, preferred path going forward for actually managing your policy inside your organization. This is really what they want you to be doing. They do want you to get rid of your server. They want you to get rid of your domain controller if you can. They want you to get rid of Active Directory and group policy on the prem. And they want you to replace it with Azure Active Directory and Microsoft Intune. Now, Intune's $8 a month, okay? And what you can do is with Azure um, Active Directory Premium 
plan one. I'll try not to say that anymore. Just ADP one with that and Intune, you have conditional access. So now you can start to apply policies inside your organization that say things like, um, this, all of my computers must have up to up to date operating systems, or all of my computers must have antivirus installed. And if they don't, okay, they're not allowed on the network. That's conditional access. So now you can create policies and standards and say, this is the security requirement of the devices in my, uh, in my organization. They must meet this standard or they cannot have access to corporate assets. So again, I don't want to go really deep into this because I know we'll just bore people to death. But the point is, is that if you're a security conscious organization, these are the tools you need in uh, Microsoft 365 to start to implement that security. And again, especially if you are interested in getting away from traditional hardware and on-prem servers. In addition, you get a service called Autopilot. Autopilot is really cool. Autopilot allows you to basically buy computers from like Dell. I'll give you Dell's a great example and have them shipped directly from Dell to your company. You don't even have to send them to your MSP or whoever your IT provider is. And as soon as you turn on that computer, it starts uh, being configured automatically for your organization. So it starts uh, installing profiles. It starts installing permissions. It starts, it's domain joined. It gets, it's being set up automatically. Now it doesn't do everything. I don't want to deceive somebody here and tell them it's going to install every app that you need in your business. Cause there are custom apps and things like that. You're still going to need applied later, but it does the bulk of the heavy lifting, especially on the Microsoft side to getting that computer set up and ready to rock and roll for your employee. Right from your man, right from the manufacturer. Cause when we mm -hmm. order the computer from Dell or uh, HP or whoever it is that you're getting that from, we set that up with them. We let them know, hey, this belongs to this organization, and we give them the information they need to make the autopilot connection. You also get Microsoft Defender, right? the more advanced versions of this, Microsoft Defender for Business, and you get it for Microsoft for Office 365 as well. So it's giving you advanced uh, antivirus, sort of like next-gen antivirus protection, working sort of like an EDR, right? Like endpoint de detection and response tool as well as giving you advanced uh, protection in your email to actually prevent malicious emails. And this is including things like file detonation, making sure that it opens files in a sandbox. So they don't actually, if they have something malicious in them, they don't actually, you don't find that out in your network when you open it up. You get uh, URL filtering, you get network connection filtering, you get email link protection. There's a lot of additional security tools that this gives you in your environment. And again, if you're a security conscious organization, you're trying to, maybe you need CMMC compliance or maybe HIPAA is a big thing for you, right? You're a healthcare organization. These tools are gonna to be directly applicable to making sure that you're compliant with NIST standards. So NIST 800-171, NIST 800-161, NIST 853, ISO 2701 or 27001, whatever that one is. All those standards and a lot of the people listening to this a lot of you will know, you'll, you'll have heard those because in your industry, they, they apply. These are the tools you're going to need to be able to start becoming compliant with that. Um, Microsoft information protection. I'll just say this as well. Making sure that you actually are protecting the IP in your organization, that it doesn't leave and go places you don't want it to. Okay. Um, making sure that you're not sending information out that you shouldn't be sending. Um, there's a lot of tools involved in the business premium that start taking you down that path. Now I will say that to really get the protection there that you want, you might have to graduate to E5, um, but Microsoft information protection is part of it. And then litigation hold, uh, you know, if you're, if you need uh, to put a hold on your data because you're being sued or you're suing somebody else, or there's some sort of dispute, you have that ability. So just a tremendous amount of value specifically in management going serverless and in, uh, you know, cyber protection, features for your environment. This is chock full of them. You know, you're looking at probably around $30 worth of value that you're getting for nine bucks. So it's just a tremendous amount of value that I think is practical value. It's not a bunch of stuff that you don't need. It's stuff that you really should be implementing in your business environment. Understanding also that the, these are things that a lot of businesses are already uh, seeking out implementing maybe their, their, um, uh, third or fourth party services that the business has to get, at, um, you know, outside of this. Um, and, and, and now 
uh, it may be included. Obviously, some of these features are add-ons and there's an additional price to it, but that that still could be lowering the price point for them. But I like a well, couple yeah, things so, that you – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so these things that we just mentioned, right, aren't – they're not add-ons, right? Those are all part of the business premium list, but there are – still other add-ons that you can you can bolt on top of this like teams uh microsoft teams like full-blown audio if you actually want to do like voice calling through microsoft and replace your phone system that would be something else you'd have to to bolt on but what's crazy about this is just how much you get for nine dollars yeah and when you're looking for uh, uh security which is it's a word that is it's on everybody's tongues right now um, and you've mentioned it multiple times, but some, some businesses, um, some verticals security is, is paramount, especially when you're dealing with other people's, uh, sensitive information. So, um, you already mentioned the healthcare industry, maybe legal industry, financial industry. Um, they obviously have a lot of information that they need to protect, right? So some of these, uh, these standards that you mentioned, um, these, uh, they need to be compliant with it. So, um, and then going serverless. You mentioned that as well. We already have a video on that. A mm -hmm. lot of businesses are looking to go that way. So obviously important information. Um, there's a lot of businesses that, that, that fit into the category of someone who might be looking for this. Um, is there, are there any other businesses that you, that you can think of that maybe this is something that um, could still benefit them that maybe, even if they don't necessarily fit directly into those verticals, um, any yeah. other businesses that you would suggest this for? Well, so manufacturing is definitely going to, you know, fall into that, right? That's definitely going to be a vertical that's interested in like uh, CMMC and, and NIST 800-171 compliance. But even if you're not trying to achieve a compliance standard, uh, are you trying to go serverless? Do you want better security? Uh, do you want mobile device management? Do you want to be able to, if somebody loses their phone and they have corporate data, do you want to be able to destroy that data so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands? You know, do you want to have device encryption um, where your uh, your your um, keys are stored as part of your uh, Microsoft 365 Azure environment so that you don't have to worry about losing encryption keys? Like, and again, that might be pretty in the weeds for most business owners, but the point is, is like, do you want your data encrypted? Do you want your data secured? You know, do you want to have good organization, uh, you know, for, uh, with regards to who works here and who's supposed to be allowed to access what files? Everybody needs those things. So I wouldn't say the business premium is only applicable to people who have compliance standards, but it is definitely applicable. I'm like, absolutely, it's a must for them. And I would say really these days, there's very little reason not to have this level of licensing from Microsoft in your, in your environment. It's such a value for nine bucks. You get so many tools. And, and the thing that I want to say is these are the, 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 the quality of these tools is the highest quality there is. This is what Microsoft uses at Microsoft to protect Microsoft. You know, they're not using third-party vendors to do that. They're using these tools. They develop them to protect themselves, and then they make it available for us to use to protect our customers. Um, but they're not easy to set up. This is, I want to say this. You do need to know what you're doing. And there's a lot of IT professionals that are not familiar with these tools, especially if you're like, uh, if you've only ever dealt with one organization, maybe you're the IT guy for the company you work at, but you've only ever worked at that company or two or three before, you probably don't have a lot of experience deploying these tools because you just, you've only done it once, maybe twice. Whereas with an MSP, you know, we have deployed tools like this over and over and over again across hundreds of customers. We really do get that experience, you know, to understand how this should be implemented, right? So um, you want to make sure that you are working with somebody who has the experience to set these up correctly, because otherwise you wind up paying for the license, even though it's only $9 a user, you pay for the license, and then you don't ever get the tool set up and you don't benefit from these features. So you want to make sure you're working with somebody who knows how to set it up and has deployed it before. And then one other thing I'll say about SimpleWorks, you know, we invest a lot of time, money, and effort into training specifically uh, in the Microsoft track. We focus heavily on making sure our employees are actually learning and getting certified in, uh, you know, the Microsoft 
Office 365 and cloud suites, right? The Azure and cloud environment. So you want to make sure you're working with somebody who's putting in the time and the effort to actually train their people so they can use these tools correctly. But if you, if you know how to do it, or if the person working at your organization, uh, doing your IT is qualified, talk to them about using these, uh, you know, upgrading your license to take advantage of these features and have them deploy it for you. Cause it's, it's su certainly worth it. Awesome. Well, this is the point where we, uh, we break it down. We make it simple for everyone. So in 30 seconds or less, Travis, why should you upgrade from Microsoft 365 business standard uh, or a lesser version of Microsoft uh, 365 uh, business to business premium? Tremendous value. Lots of bang for your buck, right? Uh, you can go serverless. This is a start to doing that. You can uh, do mobile device management. You can increase your security. You can get further uh, towards meeting that compliance if you have regula regulatory compliances like NIST standards that you have to, like CMMC that you have to comply with or HIPAA. It's just a lot of features, a lot of bang for your buck. It's all useful things that are worth the time and money if you implement them. So go do it. <laughs> like the last little, last little plug. <laughs> <laughs>